2008 was a great year for games, and one of the hidden gems of the year was Crayon Physics, a free little game I found at experimentalgameplay.com. The game amazed me with its simple yet brilliant and original gameplay mechanics, and delighted me with its beautiful visual style and music. For all the game's brilliance, it was limited. After all, it was a one-man, five-day experimental game. 2009 has brought us a much more realised version of Crayon Physics, Crayon Physics Deluxe. It's the same concept expanded to include all number of new additions and refinements, and like its forebearer, it both amazes and delights. The object of the game is to manoeuvre your ball, over which you have no direct control, into a star ensconced somewhere in an environment where everything is subject to authentic physics. You achieve this by drawing things with either your mouse or on your tablet if you have one. The game starts off simply. The first star is on a flat opposite your ball and you just draw a box that falls onto your ball to propel it forward. Things gradually become more complicated and soon you're introduced to screws which allow you to connect shapes together, to ropes which allow you to create fairly elaborate mechanical devices, and finally to rockets which burst into action when disturbed. These concepts are introduced gradually with simple examples of their application, allowing you to learn the game's mechanics comfortably. Indeed the game is actually quite easy, I played through all 80 levels in one sitting, but what the game lacks in difficulty, it makes up for in its stimulation and capacity for creativity. Even the simplest puzzles have a large number of solutions and it's entirely at your discretion how you reach your goal. The game's nature is such that completing a level isn't about figuring out how to solve the puzzle, as much as making up your own solution. After collecting all of a level's stars, usually there's just one but sometimes there are two, you're taken back to the game map where you can select your next level. The game offers you a pretty non-linear progression for the most part. To complete the island you just have to get to the other side, which means you can skip several stars. Upon reaching the other side, where you find a sailboat, the map zooms out to show you the full world, which consists of several islands, each of which has a particular star requirement before it is unlocked, a lot like Super Mario Galaxy. So you are free to skip several puzzles and move on if you're stuck, which is always a cool feature for a puzzle game, but it's largely unnecessary here. Although there are 80 levels, which is a huge number by any reckoning, many can be completed in a matter of seconds and few will ever take you more than a few minutes so a single playthrough may only last two hours, if that. While the freedom of the game and the creativity it encourages means you can go back and play the levels again and again, the game's lifespan would be very limited if it weren't for the level editor. The editor is barely more complex than the game itself. You draw shapes in a similar fashion and can drag, rotate, copy and paste objects in a style familiar to just about everybody. The only real difference between drawing levels in the editor and drawing shapes in the game environment is that everything needs to be affixed with pins while using the editor, which is a simple concept. The ability to create your own levels and better yet upload them to the Crayon Physics Playground for others to play and to download levels others have made gives the game an enormous potential lifespan. There are currently dozens and I imagine there will soon be hundreds and thousands of levels and these levels are literally 20 kilobyte PNG files, so you can download any number of them in moments. Hopefully in the future the playground will offer a feature allowing you to download packs of maps, as individually saving dozens or hundreds of files is quite a laborious process. The playground allows you to rate maps out of 5, so it should become readily apparent which maps are worth playing. As great as the editor is, it does make apparent an issue that plagues the game, a lack of diversity and a limited play area. Similar games like for example Armadillo Run 
use essentially the same game concept, which, while not executed anywhere near as stylishly or attractively as Crown Physics dialogues, are nevertheless far more diverse thanks to more available tools and a larger game environment. The limited size of the game area means that, while you can make elaborate pulley devices and slingshots, you can't really make good use of them, limiting you to somewhat simple puzzle concepts. An ability to zoom out or scale everything down would have enhanced the potential for creativity a great deal. Drawing with the mouse is by no means difficult, but it certainly can be awkward. Drawing perfectly straight lines or perfectly round circles, for example, is close to impossible. While this isn't a serious issue, the inclusion of a generic shape tool in the editor may have been beneficial also. This issue can be much alleviated if you own a tablet, or better yet, a tablet PC. The game is... beautiful. There's really no other way to describe it. The play score quality crayon-drawn images are an absolute pleasure to look at, and the three-song soundtrack is a joy to listen to, despite its extreme repetition. As well as being beautiful, its visuals are such that every PC should be able to run it. From the title screen, to the map, to the game world, the whole game is wonderful to look at. Further proof, not that it's needed, that the elegant simplicity of 2D visuals can easily match as a feast for the eyes, the most advanced games around. I feel ultimately that Crayon Physics Deluxe has not fully realised the potential of the original Crayon Physics, but it is nevertheless a delightful, stimulating and beautiful game that almost anyone should be able to appreciate and enjoy.